G'day everyone and welcome to another Aussie Fuji Guys video. I'm Warwick Williams. And I'm Will Anglazar. And we're the Aussie, Aussie Fuji, Fuji guys, guys, as you may have guessed. Today we're going to be doing a video about the new flash, the EFX 500, a guide number 50 flash. <laughs> We've been waiting a long time for this. It's a beautiful flash unit. It's very smart, very neat, and it's exactly what you've been waiting for for your X-Series cameras. Definitely. It's weatherproof, weather-resistant body, so it fits really nicely with the, the camera. If you've got the grips weather-resistant and a weather-resistant lens, this is gonna work really well with it. And that's gonna be very good for Will here because he shoots a lot of weddings. And as we all know, it always rains on wedding day, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, but ra rain's a good thing on a wedding day. <laughs> it can allow some, for some really creative shots. And this flash really opens up for it. As Warwick said, weather resistant. So going on your X-T2 with your grip and everything, it's gonna stay nice and compact. You can have the 16 mil or yeah. Yeah, any of your weather sealed lenses and just take it out and know that you're not gonna have any issues, which yeah. is really, really cool. Uh, using it off and on camera, especially with rain, as everyone yeah. knows, you have it behind, you can actually light up rain and make some really interesting shots. So. so, and you can use it on or off the camera. Yeah, uh, it will behave as a an optically triggered slave, or it can actually uh, will actually operate. Oh, let's fly around here. Mm. Or actually operate controlling two other groups of flashes. So oh, this cool. can be uh, group A. You can have a group B and a group C, and it'll operate them all TTL controllable. Mm. And of course, you can actually adjust your brightness on the actual screen of the camera. Ah, cool. So the, the flash actually, in some respects, becomes part of the flash system of the camera. So very easy to use and very easy to set up. It gives you a lot of different options on there for that, different channels and, uh, and so on and so forth. But I think uh, it's actually the attention to small detail. Yeah. I don't know if you've had a look at some of the things on here, but uh, neat things like the batteries. Now, if you've ever okay. shot in a nightclub or something low light and you've struggled trying to replace batteries as they inevitably run out, the two batteries facing up are up the top, the two batteries facing down are down the bottom. Instead of having to figure out which diagonal they often go on. Just simple, easy yeah, to remember. Yeah. Those, those sort of yeah. things, like those little Bit things. Easy. Yep. Yeah. Different coloured screens when you're actually in the remote mode. You actually get a brown screen when you're on the uh, brown master or orange. mode. Well, you can call it orange. Uh, orange sounds better, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's amber. Amber. It's amber. amber. It's amber. And uh, if you're in the master mode, you've got a green screen. So just simplicity. Yes. Things, things that make it easier yeah. to use as a shooter and just tactile. It's yeah. it's nice, easy buttons are big, very easy to get to, which is really handy. Um, things that we haven't sort of covered are the LED. So you can oh. actually use this for video. Yes. Which is right. which is great for someone like myself. Not not for everything, it's not super powerful, but for those little things like if you're doing ring shots or things where you just need a light and you're carrying a flash with you, yeah. it may just help, or even getting catch lights. Yeah. And so, the brightness is adjustable. Oh, cool. Them, Very cool. Um, as what covered off, it is TTL. So that TTL isn't just limited. You can actually change your exposure compensation while doing that, mm. So or flash exposure compensation. Mm. So you can go up and down a few stops while shooting it and really control how TTL works, which is really a big advantage. Other things, uh, front and rear curtains sync. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is, which is good. Awesome. Obviously, that's on a lot of flash units, but nice simplicity things. I do a lot of drag shutter in my work, especially with receptions at weddings. And when you're getting those dancing and you want that movement in each shot, having rear curtain yeah. sync is a big thing. And flash yeah. exo exposure compensation. You, you get all do those want... cool light effects. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and if you do want it in ET ETTL while doing it, exposure comp, change it down, and just simplicity. As I said, really easy. And the other thing that I like, of course, you get a nice pouch for it to fit in and in nice. there is your soft box as you've got on here uh, that actually fits after you just remove the front of the flash also on the flash itself you've got the diffuser and of course the white card the mm -hmm. reflector on there that all works very nicely and in that uh, little kit is of course is a little stand as well so it is quite uh, a nice all-in-one uh, kit yeah I noticed on that stand you even have the threaded so you can That's attach right. it straight yep. to a light stand so yep. you don't need the additional bits and bobs yep. straight away yeah and that that actually is also useful because if you, you are using it in a, a multi-flash setup you really need to angle the body of the flash towards the master flash it's an, a, an cool. optical wireless system with that uh, mounting on the little stand it allows you to orient the body 
exactly the right way towards the camera so that uh, the flash head can still point wherever you need it to go. Okay, so the last couple of things with this guys, we also have a 24 to 105 zoom coming in with this. So it allows you to really focus the beam of light down, which is handy yeah. for any setting, really having that control to be creative with a flash unit. So that's really handy. And Warwick's also going to talk about the battery pack that comes yes, with it. Yes, there is an optional battery pack, plugs into the side of the flash here, just behind this little plastic door. And that, uh, of course, allows you to shoot longer, so it gives you a longer uh, extended life and faster recycle time. It's handy. Yeah, very really much handy. so, especially if you flash a lot, as you do. Yeah, I flash a lot. Okay, so we're going to go off, we're going to do some stuff with our master and remote and how I would use it in uh, a setting. We don't really have any night time here, but we're going to do some stuff against the light. Hey guys, so we're here under the hot Aussie sun and I'm going to get oh, really warm summers, right? It is summer. <laughs> it is summer. So what we're going to do, we're going to do some off and on camera flash. Uh, we're going to talk through ETTL and when you would and wouldn't use it. Mm -hmm. And high speed sync, because this camera, this yes. flash does have high speed yeah, sync. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so. Up to 8,000th of a second. Yeah, we do have our regular shutter speed uh, cut off at 250th um, to get full power out of the flash, yeah. but high speed sync all the way to 8,000th. So yeah. we're going to work with both of those and talk you through it, using it on and off camera and with the modifier. So right. if you can go stand over there for me, Slave. Yeah. I was supposed to be the master for this. Not anymore. <laughs> cool. I prefer the term model too. One of the best features, especially while using ETTL, is actually to use our WYSIWYG mode inside the camera. Generally, I'd turn this off if I was using off camera and we we're using it more manually. But for this setting, we're going to actually expose for our background and then use ETTL to work out the foreground on Warwick. So Warwick, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to expose for the background and I'm going to let TTL work out what's going on with the foreground and see how that actually comes out. So what we're going to do, we're going to take off the softbox here, the little box on the front and take off the diffuser. Take one first and then we'll do one with and without the diffuser so we can see the difference between the two. So looking through this, about 8000 F2 looks really good at 400 ISO. So we've taken our first photo with the diffuser off. Now we're going to put the diffuser back on and see the difference that it made. The last photo, looking and knowing what I know, should have been a little bit hard, um, have a few highlights, and it would have been very directional and flat because we're shooting straight at Warwick. So this photo now with the diffuser should soften it up a little bit. Warwick, looking at me. So Warwick, we're just having a look, a bit of a review on sort of what we got with on and off with the diffuser. Yeah. And what are the what are the differences you really noticed between the two shots there? So Well surprisingly, I didn't realise how you know, I suppose harsh the first pictures are gonna look. And also the colour is a lot bluer. Yeah, definitely. Uh, without do. the diffuser. Yeah, these these are daylight balanced mm -hmm. and today is a little bit well it's a, it's a much more sunny yeah. day. It's a little bit more yellow, which is different so with the diffuser on it's really softening that out and it's nearly looking a bit more natural yeah. as far as flash goes anyway which is quite good uh, it'll blend a lot better for us so very very nice so what we're going to do now we're going to get it off camera and we're going to move into a few directions and sort of seeing how the flash will work closer further away and from side to side and where okay. it's going to be the most appealing for shooting mm -hmm. what we've done here is we've moved the flash we've got it about 45 degrees to warwick at the moment I've exposed how I sort of want the background. There's not really much to work with here, but we're just trying to sort of angle ourselves so we're using the sun a little bit more. And we've kept the diffuser on it. So what that's gonna do is give us a softer light, but being closer, it's gonna actually make the light source larger. So it should give us a softer image overall. It shouldn't look as harsh on Warwick and as flat. So it should give us a little bit more of an interesting image. So let's try that now. You ready, Warwick? Yep. So we're just going to quickly review the image that we've just taken. This was used using the diffuser with the flash about 45 degrees off Warwick and about a metre away from him. So what that's done is it's actually made the effective light source much larger by going closer. So what in theory that should do is provide a softer image because the effective light source is closer to the subject. Yeah. We'll try it without the diffuser and see sort of what we get. I assume it's probably going to be a harder light source, going to have a bit more contrast to it. So we'll try that now and see what we get. We're shooting at 1 8,000th at about 640 ISO. So that should give us about the same image as what we had before. I haven't really changed the flash, so we're gonna have a look and see if it's different, less different, and see how we go. So Warwick, camera up for me. So Will, I noticed we're using 
the X-T2, two flashes, one on the camera, one off the camera. Mm -hmm. The one on the camera didn't have pointed at me. No, we're only using this to actually transmit. So okay. what this is doing was telling the other flash to flash. We, sure. we didn't want any light coming off this flash to actually interfere with the image. So that's kind of where we go with uh, transmitter and receiving. And I'm surprised the difference that the uh, having the diffuser on and off made. Quite a substantial difference for portrait photography. Yeah, definitely for, for contrast in the image and actually having a softer image. As we said before, effective light source being closer and further away, but having a harder light source mm. definitely makes a difference. If you do want to find out more information about this, you can see the Fuji guys is gourd. Gourd. Yeah, he attached another video which will be found below in the descriptions. So you can find out a lot more about the EFX500. Yeah, that's the technical video. Yeah, the technical <laughs> video. The less technical video <laughs> is this one here, so yeah. And do I get to be model on the next time or is that you? It's oh me. good, we're doing a car shoot next time, oh, so you exciting. can be the car. I'll be See the you car. later. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>